Hello and welcome to the lab cast by Maruti Tech Labs. In this series, we talk to engineering leaders and get to know actionable insights that will help you take your development practices to the next level. I'm Bikshita, Senior Marketing Executive at Maruti Tech Labs, and I'm thrilled to be discussing a topic today that's got everybody's attention and how. It's the debate between low code technology and traditional development. And who better than Harsh Makadia for clearing our perspective on this topic? Harsh oversees product delivery and user adoption for the early stage startup clients here at Maruti Tech Labs. Harsh also works with Zuru Tech India as a senior software engineer. He also has an ebook to his name where he has curated a list of 100 plus no code tools to help you ship your product faster. You can find all about it and more of his content on Twitter. Hi, Harsh. Glad to have you here. Thanks, Bikusha. Good to be here. So, Harsh, uh, tell us something about your role, what you do, and what your day usually looks like. Yeah. So, my day usually starts with Scrum meeting where I uh, discuss about the different projects with my teammates to keep track of the day-to-day -day tasks which are assigned. Throughout the day, I am involved in the technical discussion, helping my teammates to look into look into their issues. I attend client calls where we discuss with the client about the day-to-day -day progress which we make on the project and also the new features that we need to be implemented. And apart from that, I also love spending time on reading uh, latest news about technology to stay up to date on what's happening, what's trending these days and so on. That sounds great. Now, uh, to begin from the beginning, what is low-code development? Low-code development platform provides a development environment used to create application software through a graphical user interface uh, instead of traditional uh, hand-coded development. What happens is you don't need to build everything from the scratch. In this approach, you take advantage of existing solutions and then develop additional component which is required. Because this approach is used to build a customized solution uh, with the existing uh, components rather than building everything from scratch. So it is just a technique in which you use some drag and drop tools to build the foundation and then start building on top of that. Okay, so how exactly is it different from traditional development? Can you elaborate on that? Okay. So I love this uh, example of an, I usually a lot of people ask about how to differentiate between uh, you know code and low code. So I just like to give this example of an elevator. So let's assume you want to go to the top floor of the building. Uh, with code, what you do is you climb all the stairs to the top of the building. And in case of low code, what happens is you are already on the fifth floor of the building and then you go to the top floor so it becomes like easy for you because you already are at an intermediate place and then you need to jump so uh, low code development has enabled developers citizen developers and busiest users to quickly uh, use or build the apps using drag and drop interface and uh, there are a lot of differences when it comes to you know traditional development in case of traditional development you require a high skill set for example you need to have a good programming knowledge at uh, in order to build apps, but in case of low code, you can just drag and drop. So anyone can, uh, you know, actually build that. It becomes easy to maintain in terms of low code because uh, not all the responsibilities is under your, uh, you know, head. It depends on what vendor you go with. So a lot of responsibilities are shifted to them, and there is a lot of resource saving uh, happen happening in case of low code because you save a lot of time and money because ultimately uh, everything is delivered faster. So if we go with the traditional approach, we require a software team who is going to work on the entire application and so on. But with low code, uh, you know, a single person can also build a application. So it helps in that terms about the resource saving. And ultimately what happens is in the low code is there is a low risk and high ROI, I think, because uh, there is 
lots and lots of tools coming up every day so building the things have become easy with low code right so great analogy with the ground floor and the fifth mm-hmm. floor that really uh, put the idea across very clearly mm-hmm. so uh, if i were to use low code development what exactly would be the benefits that i would, that I would get uh, over traditional development so there are many uh, benefits you get so first is as i discussed about the low cost and reduced time to market with low code development tools cost is drastically reduced because you don't need to hire many developers in order to build that and at the same time you can ship uh, your product faster so it helps you to save a lot of time there is agility in terms of uh, low code development uh, you can make the changes faster so that is one of the plus point you get apart from that there is a better risk management so with constantly uh, changing regulations enterprise can adjust quickly in case of low code and no code approach to stay compliant with that then there is uh, increase in productivity because uh, low code platform helps it is a bridge but uh, it is a uh, you know it bridges gap between it and business teams allowing them to solve the real world problem and you know ship faster there is better security so that uh, everything most of the things is handled by the vendor so it is definitely uh, you don't have to you know look into all the aspects of security because everything has got covered by its own so uh, with so many benefits it's uh, natural that you know we are discussing low code development type but uh, why do you think low code development has gained so much traction at this point of time like what is contributing to its growing popularity in this moment in in uh, limelight for several years and i think its awareness is also increasing day by day one of the strong reasons i think uh, because everyone is moving towards digital transformation so post covid lots and lots of companies are you know making digital transformation and this no code tools is like blessing to them because they it helps to set up things faster low code uh, applications also you know they directly provide uh, templates or there are ready made templates available so things can be implemented quickly and typically save a lot of cost to them and also it has got a lot of wide use case for example it can be used to build personal apps it can be used to build internal apps within the organization or you can also build a product full fledged product or a a uh, software as a service application uh, using low code so because of all these reasons i think uh, you know low code is getting a lot of traction and probably it will still continue because it is opening new doors uh, to the people who can't code because uh, you require a lot of skills when it comes to you know uh, coding from scratch but this is like a blessing to everyone uh, who who don't have technical knowledge right now uh, we have discussed about low code being a blessing for the non coders right but what about the coders now <laughs> many from the developers community uh, echo the sentiment that low code development is just a bunch of fancy interfaces to build static websites now how true or false is that statement so uh, there are two things one is about you know low code and the other is no code so in case of no code i i agree that it is a static builder so basically you just have to drag and drop the components and uh, the website is built but in case of uh, low code uh, it is not just a static builder because it also handles complex business applications you can make uh, api calls and you know build a mobile friendly application and uh, i I'm, what i mean to say is it can handle complex applications uh, if you want if you are supposed to build a complex application you can definitely uh, use low code tools and in fact i think uh, it is here i mean low code tool is here to make developers life easy they can ship faster and you know evaluate their ideas faster because i think uh, it at the end of the day it will uh, help both uh, the organization and the developers as well because developers know about or have some knowledge about this then it is definitely going to help them so uh, what are some of the low code platforms that we have implemented there are uh, various uh, low code platforms so each one comes with different learning uh, learning curve and different use case so some of the tools that we have tried is out system mendix then i think uh, process maker microsoft power apps then there is a tool from salesforce lightning ui then zoho creator and i think kissflow was one of them 
Okay, so uh, can you describe one of these projects where we have taken the low code part? So one of our client is an award-winning luxury fashion startup based in uh, Paris, France. So uh, they wanted to build an application to provide personalized experience of the store in the app. So uh, it was an application. What what the application we built was a platform where you know all the fashion inventories were shown. and it also provide a service called stylish as a service so what what used to happen is uh, there was a platform wherein the user can uh, you know talk to the stylish uh, uh, in real time with a chatbot and interact in uh, interact with him as if he was in the store itself so it becomes easy to you know make the selections because uh, these luxury brands uh, anyone who is getting uh, the inventories or getting the clothes from there has you know uh, needs a stylist so this was the experience basically it was built to we created a platform to create a personalized uh, experience that sounds great uh, so uh, how did the client benefit by using this low code technology so uh, what we had done in this mvp is we built it with the combination of no code and low code tools so it saved 60% of the cost compared to the traditional development so traditional development would have taken you know 12 to 14 weeks to develop that application but with uh, this combination of low code tools we built it in within the 6 week so there was less involvement uh, from the client side also because uh, Uh, you don't need much help because we once the requirements are clear we could directly build those things and uh, as i mentioned that there was 60% of uh, cost saving done so the client utilized that 60% into the uh, in marketing this platform and it was great to see the result that there was a lot of traffic uh, which we saw and uh, everything was scalable we never faced any issue with this platform in terms of scaling that's great 60% in cost saving i think every startup founder wants that yeah absolutely <laughs> uh, so will it be correct to say that early stage startups as well as enterprises can benefit from low code technology absolutely early stage startups uh, like client we work with uh, work with can reduce time to market by using low code platforms Uh, there is you know no technical co-founder required or a full-fledged software development team required in order to you know build a basic prototype of your product so validating idea becomes much faster because uh, i think time and cost is those are the two things which matters the most to the startup because they cannot waste time in building the entire thing and then uh, come to know that like this is not working for me so it is better if they build a prototype and validate the things faster and if it is working then yes definitely uh, you know you can build uh, continuously on top of that and in terms of uh, enterprises less burden on the it team definitely because uh, not much involvement is required and more involvement of business decision makers uh, can be uh, you know uh, more involvement is there from their side while building the application so definitely uh, it is a win win for both startups as well as enterprise right Uh, so what should be the way ahead for organizations looking to implement low code platform so we have uh, you know built lot of applications with no code and low code so there are uh, many tools coming up every day uh, with each of them providing or fixing a specific type of problem so i think uh, what matters the most is uh, what problem you are trying to solve so based on what problem you are trying to solve you can look into uh, different low code platforms and different vendors on some of different factors for example user inter- uh, inter- user interaction whether there is a drag and drop uh, facility available while building the application uh, and also check on the configuration settings and tools like how the things can be customized or is there any ready made template available which you can take and build on top of that then you can also check on the technical support whether how those vendors are providing the support in case of customization if additional customization is required and so on and uh, one thing which uh, you know matters most these days is about the cloud infrastructure so maybe uh, those points could be also taken into consideration like how uh, you know the infrastructure is managed and what happens when there is a lot of traffic coming on your product will it scale or not so uh based on your problems uh, you can look on the points which i mentioned and that's how we had built 
uh, many prototypes so uh, now that we have discussed the benefits of low code technology over traditional development and uh, you know how organizations should implement the same so let's move on to addressing the elephant in the room which is uh, with the rise in low code development do you think the role of software engineers will become less important over time <laughs> definitely uh, i would like love to answer this question because i am a software developer myself so through that low code and no code platforms helps enterprise to escape developer skills and shortage and navigate uh, the challenge quickly and you know build the applications faster uh, so but the thing is a uh, lot many developers are worried that no uh, no code is going to you not know, take the job away because they they will not have anything to be done because everything will be done by the tools but the thing is uh, all these tools has core underneath it so in order to build this low code tools or no code tools uh, definitely uh, you require a hard coding uh, and you need to build this things from scratch so i think the developers would be unstoppable if they you know have the knowledge of both code as well as low code because uh, when to use what matters the most because if you are building a quick prototype and you know you want to validate things faster then you can definitely uh, you know use low code or no code tools and when you want to build a uh, application which which you need to scale well and there is a lot of complex things which cannot be built with low code tools then yes definitely code uh, is the one which will you know uh, come into existence so co- code is definitely a fallback for all the things if nothing can be built with co- no code or low code then definitely code is still there and i, I don't think that you know uh, so the software developers are going anywhere they are going to stay here as long as the technology is evolving right i think that's uh, relieving to hear for our software developers <laughs> okay uh, now so how uh, what i understood is basically this isn't an either or situation right but it's rather yeah. two methods complementing each other and making the process easier for the parties involved that's exactly how it is great uh, well harsh uh, great catching up with you on low code development and how companies big or small can benefit from it Thank you so much for having me Bikshita. Okay and uh, thank you all for tuning in. We hope you found the session insightful and value packed. Uh, tell us what you think of the debate between traditional development versus low code development in the comments below. And if you have any words of encouragement for us, any guests you'd like us to interview, the, you know where to list them down. The comment section is all yours. We'll see you in our next episode. Thank you.